Welcome to Impolite MTG. Where we're going to talk about Magic the Gathering. And we're not always going to be nice about it. I'm Chris Norn, grad cinnamon bun. Hey, I'm Dave, guru of s'mores. I think we need to have a long conversation about what happens before we shuffle up and play Commander. And we need to talk about the fact that conversations before we shuffle up aren't happening. Chris and I are huge proponents of Rule Zero. Yeah, I mean, honestly, without Rule Zero, we tend to get into some really difficult situations. It's kind of a part of the game that never gets talked about online at all. We have people who just don't mention it, they don't like to have the conversations at hand, and when you go into a public area and you start trying to play with other people, well, they're kind of an untrusted play environment. You don't know what their decks are going to be like, no idea about power level, any of that. This is why you need to have those conversations. Yeah, 100% agree. And and the reason you have those conversations is because you want everybody there to have a good time. Because Commander is a social format. That's four people that are sitting down to play a game. And for me personally, like I want my time to be respected because there's other things I can go do in my life. I can go build Lego models or read a book or something like that. I'm choosing to sit down and play magic with a bunch of other people because it's a fun, social, engaging environment. The thing I want at bare minimum is for my time and effort to be respected. Uh, without the respect, what do you really have? You got a bunch of dudes with giant egos and tiny peepees trying to prove something to themselves. That's what you have. Which, it doesn't really amount to very much here. Uh, and, and so I, I think we kind of have to like approach this properly. Like, we've had experiences where we have one deck at the table, you know, it's power level 9, and we're all sitting at power level 6. Yeah, and those are just some really bad beats. Nobody at that power level 6 has a good time. And for the people that like to play it, like power level 9 and stuff like that, I would argue, like, why does that win mean anything to you when you had no real competition? So the classic saying, taking candy from a baby. What good is that win if you didn't really have to work towards it? Me, personally, it just rings hollow. How much fun can you really have pub stomping anyways? So I think we need to first talk about, like, what is a trusted play group and what's an untrusted play group? Right. These are very simple concepts. Like your trusted play group is your personal play group. It's your mom, your dad, your brother, your sister, your friends. You see them every day. It could be a small group at your uh, LGS where you uh, meet up every week, you play together. You don't know each other outside of there, but you play enough together that you know what their decks are going to be like. You know what their power levels are. Right. And the important thing with a trusted play group is that everything is permitted. Anything that you want to do within your personal play group, and especially if you're at home at your own kitchen table, everything is fair game. Definitely something we want to make a distinction here in this episode between trusted play groups and what you you can do there, and then untrusted play groups and what should be done there. Yeah, good luck getting your uh, untrusted play group to play plane chase with you. Oh, God. <laughs> they might be you, more willing to play uh, Arch Enemy, though. Oh, yeah, you you're know. definitely going to find some Arch Enemy games in Untrusted Playgroups, whether you intended that or not. I, I think we need to kind of break this down. Like, what should we be talking about as far as, like, Rule Zero? Power level's a big one. I think, you know, that's the number one thing. That's what everyone tells you when they have Rule Zero conversation. Yeah, p power level is, like, the first thing that's kind of the, the barometer everybody uses. Even though the whole power level discussion kind of sucks, like, we need a better alternative to it. A private play group's definition of a six might be wildly different than somebody else's idea of what a power level six is uh, you can end up having those mismatched power levels so even though that discussion is a little bit fraught with its own issues it's still at least worth having i agree with that 100 percent uh the other thing to take in mind with this is power levels kind of suck in general but they're necessary so we can actually understand what's going on with the decks so many things affect power level too like what's the budget of the deck are there proxies in the deck are you running a weird uh secret commander that no one knows about we need to know because like, there could be some unusual combos here that we may not be okay with. Yeah, and then you also want to talk about things like your win conditions. Um, I definitely like you know pointing out, hey, like I don't tend to play with combos. Or like if I do have some combos in a deck, I'm like, yeah, this deck has a combo here or there. And the other important thing is what are your game goals? Are you actually trying to win? Are you trying to win early? Is your deck a little dirtly? Or are you playing that Caldra Vorthos deck where your idea of a win is getting Caldra assembled and then, woo, look, Exodia, Nito, we, and then that's like you get clobbered. You have to have your personal. Kenrith uh, King Arthur deck ready to go, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, like, 
you kind of need to know this stuff before you even start the game. If your goal of the game Definitely, is to like, win, great. For certain, yeah. It's uh, like nobody, nobody is going to fault you for for wanting to win. I was gonna say, and looking at untrusted playgroups, like often, like you're playing these people at Command Fest, or you're playing them at your LGS that you're new to. You have never been there before. Or you're also or, the big one is Spell Table. Yeah, Spell Table is huge right now. Spell Table is actually the main reason I actually wanted to have this conversation because with the proliferation of Spell Table into how much Commander we actually play during the COVID lockdowns and post-COVID lockdowns, it, it's become more important now than ever that we start having these conversations. It was important before, but now I would say it's actually necessary. A lot of factors change for a lot of people. Oh, uh, yeah, definitely. And going back to uh, like some of the things that you might see in untrusted playgroups, there are some LGSs that run prizes for commander tournaments. We need to talk about like proxies in those settings. Those aren't technically allowed by Wizards rules for tournament plays where prizes are available. Yeah, and you can actually get your LGS in trouble by playing with proxies in those events. So it's even more important for the health of your LGS. If you're going to run them, but you own the card, fine. Um, we know people, plenty of people, run um, the OG duels. They run proxies in their deck because they don't want a 500 uh, or 800 or, you know, $1,000 card getting ruined at a table. Yeah, that, or some cards are just expensive and you only own one copy. Sensei's Divining Top is an expensive card. Wizards hasn't reprinted it enough. If you've got a Rashmi, Tourney's Crafter's deck, and a Yuriko deck, both of those bitches want to know what's on top of its library. I only have one, they have to share. One of you guys gets a proxy, the other one gets the actual card. Most people are okay with that. As long as you talk to them about it first, though. Like, you don't want to surprise people. Exactly. And Sur surprisingly enough, people in Commander don't like surprises. Unless it's a fun in-game surprise, like a group hug deck. Some people don't like hugs. I love hugs. I like, I like Not from you, Dave. Aww. Moving away from hugging Dave, we're not going to talk about that anymore. Um, budgetary surprises could be weird, too, because if a card in your deck is $60 and you're playing in a play group with very low budget decks... Or just pre-cons. The people that are playing at my LGS right now, they're playing a lot of pre-cons and a lot of upgraded pre-cons. So if you walk in with your $2,000 automatic assault deck, that's going to be some bad feels. Yeah, you don't want to rock OG slivers against, you know, a... Uh, $50 pre-con deck. Like, that's not a lot of fun. Yeah. I don't know about you, Chris, but the games where I enjoy winning were the ones where I really had to fight for it. Yeah, we've talked about watching Command Zone play um, their episodes of Game Nights, and we, the games we like the most are the ones with the back and forth. Yeah, the really so, swingy decks are the fun ones. Think about your favorite YouTubers who, you know, do gameplay content. Which games do you actually enjoy? Do you like the game where someone blows someone out in five turns with a powerful combo? No, not really. Combo decks are kind of boring, in my opinion. I like combo decks. You can shut up, Dave. <laughs> hey, man, look, I'm just a Simic player. I just want a turtle, and I just want to punch you in the face with, like, 50 Rampaging Bailoff tokens. Leave me alone. You can do that with uh, Omnoth Locus Creation, though. Hey, screw you. I managed to do that with two less colors. You can shove your, your two extra colors up your ass, because Tatiova says, fuck you. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay, you, you you win this round. <laughs> I'll give it to you. You kind of want to know what you're getting into. You have to have the conversation, proxies, budget. What's your deck cost? Like, to me, a budget deck is $200. I used to think that $100 was budget, but because the upward cost of Magic in general, I would actually agree with you that uh, a budget deck is $200 or less. I would say the average deck is three to 400 maybe pushing 500 but like... Uh, if you want ultra budget, you're below 100. If you're going for some challenge deck, 50 bucks, that's your budget. That's that's and... some commander quarters <laughs> level stuff right there. Shout out to Mitch. Yeah, definitely give Mitch a shout out. I guess speaking of like decks and like what we like to play here, we, we should always uh, discuss the number of decks you have to play with. Because that... not every deck is going to meet the power level at the table. So you might want to swap up. Or you could be a player who only has one deck. You're new to the game. You're just learning to build the decks. Your only deck just so happens to be some beefy, beefy big boy deck sitting at like an eight or a nine power level. That's all you got. That's all you got. We can't really do anything about that. 
Yeah, one of the things you could do is, provided you're playing in like a untrusted situation like a uh, LGS, maybe you can try and be like, hey, does anybody else have any higher power level decks? Try and pair off with people who can maybe handle that kind of thing. And I, I would also say that like if you're going to build one deck and you're you're actually spending the money to have that one big boy deck, spend an, an, another 40 bucks and get one of the pre-con decks. Or if you can still find them, go grab the uh, Commander Legends or Zendikar pre-cons at 20 bucks those are pretty fantastic uh especially um, the zendikar ones i love the those decks were great uh what are some other solutions that we can maybe bring into the conversation with regards to like rule zero well i mean if people aren't willing to have the uh, rule zero conversation being formally brought up you can always approach it as more of a g general conversation you can be like hey dave uh i'm running this deck today it's galazeth prismari it's it's an artifact spell slinging storm deck is that going to be okay? Are you okay playing against that tonight? I could be like, yeah, that's fine. And then I could actually maybe pick a deck that suits that kind of gameplay because I personally have a lot of decks myself. And uh, that's actually another you know, good co good solution is have a bunch of decks so that you, you can adjust based on what other people are playing. You know, you can have your automatic assault deck when you want to play the, the big boys. And if you, you like... You can have your fun Vorthos deck, like... I'm, I joked about a Kenrith um, uh, King Arthur deck, but honestly, I'm thinking about building that now. Nah, that cool. sounds like a fun deck to play. Yeah, that'd be cool. Um, yeah, my Kenrith deck is like more politicy, kind of like uh, not politics in like the like the voting cards and stuff like that, but politicking is like, oh, here's a Zancha. Do do something with that. Okay, I'm gonna go to your creature. It's like I'm gonna make you interact with me in some level of the game. That's what my deck does. Yeah, I you think know, you missed the most important part about that uh, that politic Kenrith deck. Don't attack me, and I'll give your creature plus one plus one. Yeah, sure. Hey, don't exactly. attack me, and uh, and I'll give your creature taste and trample until end of turn. Mm-hmm. You know, you're definitely forcing the table to interact with you. You know, you're influencing the game. I guess you could call it a Kenrith TikTok deck because he's an influencer. Oh God. <laughs> God damn it. Oh, uh, fuck TikTok. <sighs> Another potential solution to this uh, whole thing is like having a game two if you're playing more games or having a post-game conversation where um you literally talk about like hey uh you failed to mention you have this ultimate bomb card in the deck that's really game breaking maybe you failed to mention that you're running crater hoof as your win con and had a way to cheat it out like five turns early yeah maybe you had uh an infinite combo that can happen on literally turn two these are important things to know and having that co uh, conversation like you told me you didn't have any like infinite combos in your deck and you pulled off an infinite combo in the game there like have that conversation there definitely a caveat there is there are times where like you put cards in in the deck and you don't necessarily intend for it to interact the way they end up doing and you can end up finding an accidental combo the other caveat i would uh, add there just you know for clarification is sometimes you're not super duper ultra powerful deck just has a really good opening hand it has the nuts draw and it just fires off on all cylinders in ways that the deck doesn't normally do so that's also an important conversation to have it's like guys it doesn't normally do that and then you could actually have a conversation about game two like hey let's play another game i'll play this deck again and it probably won't do this again. And they, you, then everybody can say, oh, yeah, he actually didn't combo off and, and do this crazy thing super early. He just got a really good opening hand. Yeah, I mean, earlier today in the Discord, we were talking about unbanning Emrakul, Ion's Torn, what that would look like in the format. And one of the things that came up is, like, you could potentially drop that thing turn two. It's a god hand. You have to be super fucking lucky to do it. Yeah. But it can happen, and it will happen. And... You need to kind of mention, oh yeah, I'm running this card in this deck, and I have a way to get out turn two. If it does come up, people are going to be really pissed off at you. Yeah. And that kind of speaks to the overall goal of the Rule Zero conversation in general, is you're, what you're doing by having these conversations is you're managing expectations. You're, you're setting everybody on a base level of expectation so that we all understand what we're getting into before we play the game, before we waste 20, 30, 40 minutes playing the game, shuffling and all the, all the effort that actually goes in and then ending up in a game where three people are, are pissed and one person is maybe not pissed. Yeah. And it's also important, like if you're running stacks or mass land destruction or 
God, I want to build a Chaos deck. You need to talk to people about that before you play it. Because Chaos decks easily add an extra half hour to an hour of gameplay. The problem with that is people have other things to do. They have a time constraint. They can maybe only play for a certain time. And at some point, it, like especially if you're playing at your LGS, your LGS wants to close and the guy who's running the store wants to go home. In our first episode, we were really hard on stacks, but like the reason for it is so many people build that deck without understanding how to win with that deck. This is what Rule Zero solves. If you mention that, oh, you're playing a stacks deck, you're just pissing the table off at that point. And like certain commanders, Derevi, like, yeah. I looked up the uh, top three uh, decks built with uh, Derevi. Stacks is number one. Uh, Birthing Pod is number two, which is a different can of worms as far as like decks that piss people off. Yeah. But the third most popular build for Derevi is Bird Tribal. Yeah. No one no one pictures you playing a Bird Tribal when they see Derevi hit the table. Yeah. It's Stacks or it's Birthing Pod. Yep. And, like, if I see a Derevi deck, I'm like, are you playing Stacks? Like, no, it's just Bird Tribal. Even then, if they do even then, that. if it's like, oh, it's Bird Tribal, I'm going to keep a very close eye on that Derevi deck. And maybe a little extra hate is coming your way just because you're playing Derevi and I don't trust you yet. Hence the term, untrusted play. Exactly. The big thing with uh, some people, uh, I heard an anecdote from, I think it was the Command Zone podcast. Someone was running a Derevi deck and they said, oh no, it's Bird Tribal. It turns out they had Stacks pieces in the deck. Yeah. So they, they claimed it was Bird Tribal, but it turned out to be Stacks. Yeah. And like, this is something like, that needs to be addressed in your Rule Zero conversation. Yeah. And like, definitely don't deceive people. Like, if you're going to be deceitful about what you're doing, you're here for the entirely wrong reasons. Don't be mad when people just flat out do not want to play Magic with you because you did that to yourself. So here's the solution to that, though. If you're one of those people who wants to make sure it's clear that you're not playing Golos Competitive or Golos Lands Matter, because that's a powerful deck, you could literally just make the decision to actually pull the deck out, hand it to the players, show them the deck, and then be like, that's what I'm playing. Yeah, definitely. Some people aren't necessarily comfortable with like handing their decks over to other people, so I can kind of understand where some people wouldn't want to do that. But yeah, like even if you're not comfortable handing your deck over to somebody else, literally just thumb through it face up and be like, look, see, there's nothing in here that's super duper crazy. And Like last time I played Commander, I played my Kenrith deck, and I said, hey, there's one combo in this deck. That game went so grindy and so long that I was literally able to just dig for that combo and ended up comboing off. And then one of the guys was like, oh, I thought you didn't like combos. I'm like, normally I don't. But I said, there was a there was one combo in this deck. This game was going so long, I just decided to go for it so that we can end the game and move on. And there, the other players were like, yeah, okay, that's fine. Yeah, It's just about yeah. managing expectations. That's really what it comes down to is setting yeah. everybody's expectations for the game on a level where everybody is okay with what will unfold. Honestly, I think those are some of the best ways to solve these problems. Can you think of any others, or is that pretty much it for you, Dave? Um, I will say there is one other solution to... If you have people who do not want to have the rule, zero conversation, completely and utterly obliterate them. Be like, oh, okay, you don't want to have the rule, zero conversation? Fine, I'm pulling up my Turgor deck, and I'm going to wipe the floor with you. Which I did. So, maybe think about, if you don't want to have the rule, zero conversation, then that means you're in for a whirlwind of god knows what and you're probably actually not going to enjoy that game as much as you would have had just having the conversation and getting on the same page with everybody yeah i definitely agree with that those are probably the best ways to solve these problems i agree with that last one destroying uh, your opponents because sometimes they just don't want to talk and you need to show them why they should have that conversation exactly you know channels like ours and the good work that i hate your deck is already doing that needs to become more commonplace. I think more channels should talk about this stuff. I think more channels should give their personal opinions and takes on this kind of thing. And it should be, become a more normal aspect of MTG content creation. Be yeah, it, it would be great to see these conversations occur a little more frequently on YouTube. As a lot of channels don't do it. We don't see it with Game Nights. We don't see it with like some of the big channels. But with all that being said, I'm Chris Norn, Grand Cinnamon Bun. And I'm Dave, Guru of S'mores. Thanks for uh, spending some time with us. And thanks for watching. Hey, Chris. Yeah, Dave, what's going on? What do you call undead pork? I, I, I don't know what. Bacon of unrest. Ah. Oh. <laughs> Yummy.